Sub Shredders, my name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I will be uh, doing for uh, Wen Hao as part of their custom monthly music review. Uh, we've got ourselves Terry Lin here with uh, Your Look, and if we switch over to here, apparently this video has English lyrics as well, so that's dope, it's really helpful for me. And we're gonna listen through this track from start to finish, and we're gonna hear what we think. Let's go, let's do this. Terry Lin. Oh, that's a sensational melodic line. Oh, it's a cover. I love the sound of those lead guitars combined with the drums and the kind of 80s sort of nostalgia I'm getting from it. Fantastic vocal technique as well. Just sits there, it's mesmerizing. I think I've listened to the original of this track, so um, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's familiar to me. I love the the massive mass reverb on this and the wistful nature that the that the vocals have been done like. I mean, just full disclosure, I am reading along to the lyrics as I go along. I like the repetition of those vocal melodies there, and I think that the careful articulation of those guitar parts. And amongst that sort of really foundational pad there in the background, it, it, it does have a, a weird sort of, sort of mythical set, sort of tone to it because of those pads in the background. <laughs> Phenomenal technique with those vibratos as well. Really comfortable between the head and the chest voice. Um, fantastic impression. Okay, solo section. Nice touch. Oh, that minor shift there. Kind of sounds like we're going through a spooky forest. All oh, those bluesy transitions and those slides there. That was a hell of a banger of a solo there. We were going through different modulations harmonically and we, we, it was kind of almost a jazzy R&B sort of feel to it. Such a fantastic voicing of that. And I liked how the intensity kicked up a bit at the end. It was a little kind of giving me some sort of vibe like vibes or something like that. It's great. Really classy performance. A great alternative to this, you know, lead voice to the, to the singing. And back to the refrain. Does this song have religious connotations? As it well, does not have feelings now, but used to take care of your name and my voice. Does that um does is that sort of like implying that um you know if you're at this level you're not being taken care of, so be better off if you're above out of the mortal plane. Yeah, because I mentioned like a secular world and stuff like that, so I'm wondering if there are religious connotations to this. Oh, 
Again, that really lovely call and response about the ba -ba -da 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 -ba. I mean, that cascading lead line in the middle. It's a great development there. It keeps things sounding nice and fresh, even if they've had similar ways of expressing themselves before. <laughs> Was that a key change to kind of have the hook soar? With Creator as a capital C, are they referring to God or something like that? Charming natural harmonics there in the side in the background there alongside that lead line. I mean I'm loving the gentle sort of symbol and tom fill work there as well. It's really groovy. And the fade out there. Interesting. When now? You chose a banger. You was, thank you as well for putting the English lyrics in the video as well. It, you know, I, I appreciate that. Okay, because I, th I think basically um, this is the conclusion of this SU Patrons video uh, for Terry Lynn's Your Look. I'm not sure what this track is about after reading through the lyrics and after listening to them. I think it's a tale of regret or loss or something like that. I mean, we're talking about like a child with a lantern or something like that. Is it someone who is unaware of what the world holds in the darkness? They love the lantern because it's the only source of light or something like that. Are there, are there, it's like a spiritual creature or something like that. Are we talking to someone who's maybe out of this world? Is this trying to understand a god or like a deity of some description and how they interact with everyone? Has that person left their world and are they going to come back? There are so many questions I have about your look. Um, it looks, you know, like someone who is maybe regretting their decisions but trying to get move forward in the world anyways. That's my interpretation of this. Maybe there is more nuance to it. I remember someone being haggard, you know, like, so maybe, like, it's become tiring and exhausting this whole journey, this whole mission. Um, but I'm gonna, like, let people explain that to me, because I'd like a bit more nuance to it. I think maybe if I had, and this is no, like, um, this is nothing bad about getting requested this at all. It's a fantastic song to review. I've had a great time listening to it and, and sort of trying to figure it out. But yeah, I think I'm missing some stuff with the story, even after reading it. And I think that's testament to the articulation and uh, the, the poetry within I think that's really cool. The actual vocals themselves by Terry Lynn were phenomenal. Great, great vocalist. Fantastic vocal technique. Comfortable in the head and chest voice. Um, lots of lovely little legato passages with vibrato as well. Had that cinematic kind of 80s, 90s vibe to it with the airiness there. And it was very, very professional, you know. Um, clearly a musician who knows how to communicate in a way that's appropriate for the lyrics as well as sing in a way that's appropriate to the rest of the instruments and the backing and everything like that. I think it's testament to their confidence in their vocals. They didn't have any harmonies you know, on the vocals. They didn't bother with vocal harmonies. I think that shows a, a justified confidence in their own ability to keep the listener entertained. I think part of what also kept listeners um, entertained was the motif behind it. Um, these kind of, oh, how do I even describe the sense of longing and lost from the, the backing track? You know, that there were differences between the hooks and, and you know, like in the, in the verses and stuff like that, slightly different kind of variations of them. So sometimes we had more of a focus on the vocals and sometimes we had more of a focus on like those lead guitar lines or the rhythm parts, little palm mutes on the side or something like that. And the bass and the synth strings or the synth pads and, and the drums as well, those 80 sounded drums with that, uh, uh, that that special kind of reverb there. Um, it sounded like we were, it was a very kind of magical kind of, I don't know, necessarily magical, but it, like a fantasy kind of vibe to it or something like that. Like the thing that it came from was a fantasy kind of vibe there of someone that was a little bit out of this world. It gave me the impression from that. And the way that it's voiced, again, the, the lead guitar was sensational. It sounded like an alternative voicing, like an, a backing vocal. Uh, however, at the same time, I think the beauty of it was that it still gave so much room to Terry Lynn to sing and speak their truth that uh, it was very respectful. Um, that lead section was justified, though. The guy can shred or whoever played that can shred. Uh, at the same time, I think that, you know, when I, when I listen to this track, I go, what could you possibly add to it? I don't think you could add any more to it. 
It had an interesting sort of seemingly neutral tone to some parts of the verse sections. Whereas the hooks, it sounded a lot more sort of like tense with those minor triads and everything like that, minor major triads. It's like we didn't want to, so we wanted to sort of leave the, the verse as more of an open book and the hook was more of a refinement of the conclusion that we have about the situation there, the statement that we have about your look, so to speak, from Terry Lynn. The structure of the track, you know, at 4 minutes 20, that's that's reasonably short with some of the music I listen to um, from artists and bands nowadays. I uh, I enjoyed hearing what, you know, Terry had put in here in regards to like, again, the, 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 the verse chorus structure, you know, the verse or the verse bridge structure there, had that a couple of times in like a solo section, then a little bit of a refinement of that coming back to the outro. For then the, the the fade out I, I think that's all we needed it was a slow track so it could justify the length simply through repetition of the main score facets of the of the of the song and um there was no sleeping or no sort of like um this wasn't casual this there was clear intent to create something really special here and i think it's a fitting tribute to the original i i'm hoping it was it did kind of have those 80s production curves in it um with some more modern sort of tones to those guitars and everything like that as well as the vocal quality there it's, it's great yeah i don't think there was a note out of place i think that the accompaniment to it was performed incredibly well by the musicians involved who performed it the drums i haven't really talked about the drums i suppose the drums were fascinating to me the drums they allowed for so much space for the guitar to sit on top of it there was less of a need to fill it with like hi-hats or anything like that. It almost had like a chord note groove in it aside from those tom fills. But even now are relatively gentle. And the bass was so supportive in that low end. Really most of the um, extra sort of nuance was in the guitars and the vocals. I kind of like um, having that, some things be at the front, some things taken away. And for those front things to take turns, I think it's very competent composition there, very well thought out. Again, at four minutes 20, that there could be a million and one ways to ruin the overall vibe here but even with those transitions to those lead guitar solos and the key changes that happened there and those sort of jazzy modulations we still managed to keep it coherent and make sense with the story uh finally the recording mixing and mastering was was great you know it sounded like a commercial release terry lynn's vocals were recorded really well nice and clear in the mix um, really competent vocalist. The guitars, drums and bass sounded excellent as well. Again, that kind of 80s kind of caked reverb on it with a little bit of sort of chorusy kind of twang and, and, and sort of uh, shimmer on those lead guitar parts. You know, the, the drums were sidechained well to the rest of the mix. Although I don't think there was a stupid amount of that's a weird thing to say it's going to sound like but i don't want people to misinterpret that i don't think there was an intense amount of compression on the master bus anyways i think there was a lot of dynamic range and room to breathe here for the different instruments and vocals that are not, that their own sort of spaces in the mix for like you know the, the stereo field and all that and the leveling was good and the eqing and filtering and notching of it in the frequency spectrum was fine and there were no weird resonant frequencies aside from that i think there was very minimal sort of like after touching going on it was just simply a great performance from terry lynn combined with whatever other instrumental parts were put in there so i didn't need feel the need to sort of do any sort of crazy automation or really sort of funky modulation or anything like that it was just a really sort of fitting appropriate tribute and cover and Again, like there was nice, and there's lots of dynamic range there, you know. It never felt like they, they were changing the perceived loudness of the different sections. And uh, I like the fact that um, the music wasn't try, sort of trying to come at us in the sense that we weren't trying, it's not like we were listening to music and it was trying to overwhelm us, especially even in the hooks. It was there to kind of allow us to be a part of it, to accept it, to feel it, and acknowledge it. And I, I really don't think we needed to do anything differently there. Fantastic work in the studio production. I think it's very appropriate for what we were trying to do overall. And, and it, it's representative of what I've heard from Terry Lynn so far. So this effectively makes me patrons view of Terry Lynn's Your Look or Terry Lynn's Your Look, should I say. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go check out Terry Lynn's various social medias. And uh, I'm sure they're on major digital streaming platforms and maybe like YouTube pages. And stay cool and stay safe. And please remember, support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next CSP Patrons video. Spider hands up.